The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Into the Pit or the Vibes Broadcast Network. The show is intended for mature audiences. Please welcome your host, Coyote Knight. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Into the Pit. I decided to try something a little different this evening. Um, I got several people on here from different groups. Uh, even got a lone wolf on here. And uh, we're just going to have a talk about, you know, how we do our investigations, what equipment we use, and, and those kind of things. And uh, I'd like to introduce everyone. We have Michelle with uh, Riverside, Iowa Paranormal. We have Audra and Nancy with uh, West Suburban Paranormal Investigations. Uh, as I said before, we had a lone wolf. That would be Dan Litchfield. Uh, we have Drew, who's with Paranormal Postmortem. And my other buddy, Mike, who's with Midnight Paranormal Society. How y'all folks doing? Pretty yeah. good. Pretty well. All right. Well, we got the screen set up. We look like the Brady Bunch now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know what? Let's just start off with Audra and Nancy. And um, what do y'all usually do when you first go in to start an investigation? Go ahead. Um, generally, when we first go in, we do a small interview with the client. Mm -hmm. um, we always make sure all of us have our audio on before we even enter a residence. We do a lot of homes here in, uh, by the Chicago area. And um, basically, it's just the interview. We go through the house and see where we get some uh, AM uh, F readings or just in general. depends on which uh, person we have with us, whether they're getting a feeling. We have a couple of mediums in our team. And we kind of go by them as well. And that's what we're going to be setting up in different rooms. Okay. Setting up like for a true, um, like Audra does rods. We do rods a lot. We do echo box sessions. Um, a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, I like using the dowsing rods. Uh, they work. And they do. As long as the intention's there. I mean, they're going to work irregardless because they pick up things like you know water lines and stuff like that but if if you put your intent into it first and and you know get that communication with the spirits so you know hey what's yes what's no right right but yeah i got you um and michelle why don't you give well, us your input well we do a little bit of both uh we actually do um mainly residentials um i'm actually a trans medium and psychic medium and demonologist and so we actually have an intake coordinator that gets all the information. We have a big questionnaire that's filled out first um, and try to, you know, kind of decipher through that. We do take in, I do more old school. Um, since I'm still part of the Warren Legacy Foundation, I kind of have done a lot of the stuff that Ed and Lorraine Warren do. And um, so I use like the Polaroid cameras because that is imprinted energy that's coming through there. Not can't be manipulated too much. Dousing rods I do use, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, of course, I use little things like cat toys. I don't know if you've seen those cat balls. Mm -hmm. You actually have to hit them. Yeah. So they're not very sensitive. Um, I use a lot of the old, you know, alarms that you can put like on your windows and your doors. So if someone opens it, it starts going off. So it has to have yeah. that pressure. We, we use a lot of those because then we know if we're getting something going off, it actually had to put enough energy in it to make it go off. So it's not a very high sensitive type of thing. Okay. Now it's funny you men mentioned about Ed Warren because Drew, he, I mean, he's a big study on Ed Warren and, and the things that he did in his investigation. So you want to fill us in on what you do there, Mr. Drew? Okay, so cool. Um, so I run Panon Postmodern around the world, uh, from UK and around Europe, um, in USA and Australia. Um, so basically, I'm a clairvoyant. Yep, that's me, crazy clairvoyant. Um, I work with Dan on the side as well. Uh, me and him goes on broadcast with each other. Um, he's the lone wolf, but he's also brings me on his shows, and I go on to other shows. Um, and power pound on postmodern, uh, pa pa da 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 da. let's get my words back in. Sorry about that, guys. And power <laughs> pound on postmodern, um, we have got team members um, from all different types of teams. 
um, and I studied uh, one of the most bad things was my best thing again I kind of said it I studied uh, Ed Warren um, we know I speak to now and now with people who knows about Ed Warren especially Tony um, is a good guy awesome really guy down to earth um, part of the family he takes over the museum um, <clears throat> one of my team members were best friends with Tony um, and we linked up that way but Ed Warren's one of my favorite um, <sighs> Ed Warren lent me a lot of things in study about demonology, and um, we also got a guy on our team called Ben, who has uh, studied demonology really as well. So we're all working together in one. Uh, we investigate into a lot of random locations or uh, public people's houses, and we just study why. And if I got a question, I'll go to Dan or someone, again, to revise that. I look back on my work. It's really important I do. Yes. Um, again, it's sure. it's quite a pleasure to do and meet all of you guys on here as well and to the audience who's going out to this um my my work is really important to my heart uh like ed warren was um he was very uh down to earth he put people in his place where um people believed in a lot of different ways um and being very heavily skeptic sorry out there um so he kind of fought for his grants and said Hey, you know what? Is something happening? And he proved that point. He actually did prove to a lot of people um, spirits were actually real uh, for that point. And I kind of like that Warren because he, he he studied himself, he learned himself, like I did. Um, I studied different ways, um, and it's really important. You know, we keep that legend on for Ed and Lynn Warren as well. Keep moving on with Ed and Lynn Warren. What they did was amazing. So that's what Pan and Plus Modern really works towards we follow the start sort of style. The old style I agree with you hundred percent is one of the best. Old styles are quite fun to use as well. Because this world is literally turned into like a major, major um EMF problem situation. Whereas internet massively is running through the streets now, um like the five G. Again, that's gonna make a problem in the paranormal field, I think. Mm -hmm. So, so personally when when you first go into a place, where where do y'all start off at? I kind of look around the house, um, look around the location, wherever the location is. We have to look for like routers or anything like um, big electric bills, like, uh, the electric white cables. We just look and then we study the map first. We don't want somewhere away doing our PMF signal because the MF signal is quite big in the UK at the moment. Sally is, and especially United States as well, is starting to get really big with the uh, signal. I usually go in and start looking and revising to see if that area's got some major connection. Because on, on only that as well, we all suffer with earthquakes. Um, as well, the UK suffers with small tremors. So I got to really decide on this location, pending how the property is actually working and how I need to sort it out. And this is why I come and pick on people like Dan or something if I got something wrong and I don't feel like it's right I'll come and pick on Dan or come and pick on someone who, who likes doing paranormal and it's more important I use that um, community of paranormal field and then Mike who happens to have a show on our network <laughs> Mike what do you do when you first come in so from my team and I before we go to a location um, our first step is making sure that uh, if we're gonna take the case on uh, we, have to, we we make sure our paperwork is filled out. We want to have our waiver sign, release of liability because, you know, we don't want to go to a location, step on the property, and let's say, God forbid, we walk in and something breaks or, you know, the client gets hurt or we get hurt. <clears throat> I don't want to get sued and I don't want to sue anybody. So we, we it's, it's very vital that we have our paperwork signed because if, if they say, if they refuse to sign that paperwork, we are not going to step foot in that investigation. We're going to have to just respectfully move on or say, hey, look, when you're ready to sign it, we'll come back because nowadays it's unfortunate, but people try to sue you for everything. And yeah. we'd rather have, have our backs covered than to just kind of take someone's word. And then also too, another big uh, thing that we kind of do is, you know, we're big on transparency. You know, we're big on trust and, you know, communication. So before we go into location, it's actually happened before you can go to our, our Facebook page and see it. Um, we, we make sure that our clients are not under the influence. You know, they're not, they haven't been drinking. They haven't been doing any kind of drugs. We, we, we went through all those proper steps before we even step foot in the location because, 
you know, if everything checks out, no, no one's drunk or high or anything, and they sign the paperwork, you know, we want to make sure that we can use that footage or that, you know, that content, you know, how we want to use it. And then also, too, we want to make sure that we go in there and if someone gets hurt, whichever side it is, everyone's covered. Uh, once we've done that and then, you know, everything is clear for us to go in, um, you know, I myself will talk to the client, so will my case manager. Um, for those who have abilities, we have this thing that, that we kind of, uh, an approach that we kind of go by. Once we uh, are starting the investigation, we have our command center. You know, we'll pray before the investigation. Uh, our cleanser, Kayla, she'll come up to us. She'll put some holy water in her head like a cross. Uh, for those for those who uh, have a different religion or different beliefs, you know, we, we say if you don't want to be a part of this prayer or a part of the holy water process, you're more than welcome to prepare yourself any way you want to, but we will not start an investigation mm -hmm. until we're protected and ready uh, mentally, uh, you know, in every way possible. Then we start the investigation. And so what we kind of do is we'll break off into two teams, uh, the people who have abilities and people who don't have abilities. Uh, for those who have abilities, we let them go first. Here's the thing. I don't let them use any kind of K2 meters. I don't let them use any kind of gadgets, you know, nothing that's going to be used to communicate with the spirits besides the raw abilities. And uh, this is one thing I buy from my team a lot. I have tons of these notebooks all over my house. I buy these notebooks because, you know, I'm big on documentation. It's not only about using your equipment to document what's going on in a location. Simple pen and paper goes a long way. So my team, the ones who have abilities, the only devices they're allowed to use when they're gonna go do uh, their session is a camera, a, a recorder, or something takes still pictures. But they're not allowed to use anything other than that only because you know, I want them to be able to use their abilities to make contact with whatever's there. And then once they do their, once they do their session and they come out of the location, those of us who don't have an ability, at least that we know of, that we have to heavily rely on let's say the K2 meters or let's say, you know, EMFs or whatever, you know, we, we need those devices to make contact. We'll do our sweep. Once we've done our sweep at the end of the investigation, uh, if we're taking a break, if we're outside just getting some air, the two teams never talk as far as what they found. We don't do that to the very end of the investigation. That way, for those who have an ability and picked up something, let's say they, they made contact with a woman, a man, a child, whatever the case is. And let's say, those of us who use our, our devices, you know, made that same contact. We want to compare notes at the end of the investigation. What did you find with your ability? What did we find with our, our devices? And put those pieces together like a puzzle. And then from there, we kind of go over all the evidence. And then if we feel that's a valid piece of evidence, I mean, we go through a lot of steps before providing anything to anybody because we want, because a lot, I mean, nowadays, everybody not to be mean but becomes a critic and they think they know everything and no one is a, is an expert in this field we just we learn and so we want to make sure that we you know exhaust all our resources once we've done that and we feel it's a legit piece of evidence we'll provide it and even then we're like look it's up to you to decide if it's real if you don't believe it's real that's on you but here you go so that's pretty much what we do sweet now mr lone wolf <laughs> So since uh, you're not actually affiliated with a s specific team, um, do you help out team to team to team, or, or what, how do you do this? Well, basically, I mean, my um, background, I've only been on, uh, you know, literally on my own for the past 12 months. Uh, before that, I, ha I, I actually had my own team. Mm -hmm. um, 12 months ago, we all decided we wanted to do different things within the paranormal field. So, uh, well, some team members wanted to become YouTubers. Some team members wanted to um, work within the guidelines of um, other organizations within the paranormal. So as a result, it meant that, uh, you know, you can't really have a team if it's just yourself, really, can you? So I decided that as much as I wanted to keep my team going, uh, it was better off just being me. Um, and it's just gone from there. I mean, when we were, when I had my team go and we used to go into premises, when we went into premises, we would go around to our baselines and everything. We would be filming, you know, documenting everything in that respect. Uh, I had team members that were documenting, obviously written format, um, and we would go crazy with equipment. Um, it's a bit different over here with regards to liability because um, over here we have to, in most instances, we have to investigate premises. We have to have 
liability insurance. Mm. Um, waivers mean nothing in the UK, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's pointless even getting anybody to sign a waiver over here because they, if, if it went to court, they don't hold up. So having liability insurance to cover your back is, uh, you know, generally you have to be covered for um, upwards of five to 10 million pounds um, wow. in places. I mean, we've got some places over here. I mean, I'll give you an example. When I have my team, I'm the only person who's ever got what we call Longleat House. It's a massive, massive mansion house, um, which has a, like a zoo attached to it. And uh, they gave me the authorization to do it. Um, and it was all cleared with security and everything. And then they told me how much they wanted uh, off me to rent the place for the night. And including um, tax, it was 6,000 pounds. And um, obviously when you're a team of five, <laughs> 6,000 pounds is a bit expensive. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I think it was, I think that was their way of saying thanks, but no thanks. Um, but it's yeah, so it's a bit different when you're on your own because predominantly now I'm a, um, I'm a live streamer, so my documentation comes from that live stream. Um, I, I go back, you know, when I go into premises now, whether it be abandoned buildings or whether it be, I don't really do much in the way of home visits now. Um, but when I go into any places like, um, for example, I did Dudley Castle not long ago uh, up in the Midlands, which is uh, Birmingham area. Uh, when, I go, when you go into those places, you do have to meet up with other teams and things, but you still work on your own. So when you do your uh, different areas, you will then go in and document anything in terms of EMF and uh, bits and pieces like that. Um, what can be causing anything? You go. So we do all that, and then obviously we will start our investigation. Well, I'll start my investigation, I should say, um, and, and pretty much go from there. But mine, mine are all pretty much live streams. So everything you see is live at the time. And then once I'm finished up for the night and I get back home, um, I go through everything again, just to document it in, in a format that is um, easy for everybody to watch. Because obviously a four hour, three, four, five hour live streams, it's a lot for people to go back through. So go in, get all the best bits, condense it down. And then nine times out of 10, find more bits and pieces. Got you. Yeah, with our team, uh, number one, we have a guy that is really good with looking up the properties and getting the history and everything of it. Um, and we have actually two mediums that work with us, and they will start picking stuff up before we even get there. And then once we're there, of course, you know, we've, we've got the waivers, we have... Um, a disclosure letting them know if we find any evidence that we uh, that that belongs to us so we can put it on our social media that kind of thing now if if they're pretty adamant about being anonymous then we do everything we can to you know not let anybody know where we're at that kind of thing uh, we in fact went to a city building and I can't even tell you what city it was in but uh, they definitely didn't want that getting out. Um, I'm like a lot of y'all go in, we'll do a sweep, um, you know, with the K2 meters and things like that. I also like to go around and, and check the outside environment. Uh, this particular building, they had claimed hearing voices and things like that. And then we found out that there's a bar not even a block from there and people come out of the bar and they're belligerent and they're yelling and screaming and like oh that's probably where you're hearing all these voices <laughs> but you know every, everybody's got a different way of doing things and it works for them but I guess we can all agree that not every investigation is going to be the same anyway I agree with that I yeah. agree with that all right, let's let's talk about equipment now um, I've well, and Mike and I both have been uh, pretty much friends with the guys from Ghost Hunters, the new, the new Ghost Hunters, and we talk to them pretty frequently. It's kind of cool. They give you their phone numbers and you know, and emails and all that, and you talk back and forth with them, and they're pretty ready to talk to you. Yeah. Um, a lot of the equipment that even I've used, they're like totally against. They said mm -hmm. it's pretty much worthless. Um, 
one that I was so excited when we finally got it was the Ovulus. Oh, it's everybody's dream to get one of them. Exactly. And I noticed that as soon as you turn it on, it goes through its little vocabulary. And sometimes it gets quiet, doesn't say anything, and then sometimes it just keeps going and going and going. Now, personally, I'm done with it. I think it's useless, but, you know, everybody has their opinion. So who wants to take off on this one? Well, I mean, I, I, for me, I mean, obviously, the obelisk, I mean, there's always been over here. It's what everybody wants, mm -hmm. you know, but nobody wants any, any, any other one bar the obelisk three. You know, it, it, it's it's over here. It's pointless to talk to anybody about any any other version of it. You know, right. um, everybody wants that, but everybody likes the dictionary mode on it, and it's it's just a word generator. You know, me, I'm a, I, I prefer the phonetic setting on it, if anything. When I used to have mine, right. um, the phonetic set sort of setting, and then on top of that, the the heat sensor on top. You know, that's always a good bit, and you know, to get. Um, Obviously, yes and no answers potentially. Well, you know the the potential for <laughs> I guess a mechanical error or even the human error in creating the thing mm. to me seems a little unreliable. Although I can say that I've had it on investigations and certain things will pop up on there that we're talking about at the time. So I don't know. Who else wants to talk on this one? We've had a I, couple of experiences. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We've had a couple of experiences. One involved where we were in the car on the way to the investigation, and we were talking about a car in front of us, and it happened to be a Tesla. And when we were at the investigation, the Avalis did come up with the word Tesla. So we were kind of, that's a little weird. Last week we were at an investigation and it was myself, Nancy, and one of our <clears> other <throat> female investigators and the Avalis said each of our child's name. No kidding. That, that was really odd. That's yeah. crazy. It now, was what, unsettling. And, and Michelle, you were going to say something? I personally don't like it. Um, I think it can be, it, it can be manipulated a little bit too much and but now when you're doing small events and you have people who want to, you know, be there and hear things, um, we might use it for them because they want everything right then. So during events, I think it's a good thing to use, but when we're doing a home or I'm doing just a private investigation, we don't like using it at all. And, and Mike? Well, I mean, honestly, like when we do our live uh oh, frozen. Investigation oh, apps yeah. itself. I've used other apps. I've used other apps and other devices that were similar to it. And I think, to be just honest, 100%, it's more so for entertainment for the viewers because, yes. you know, realistically, we, you know, like there's there's an app that I use, and I don't know if you guys have all heard of it. It's called Necrophonics. Yeah, and, got it. Yeah, you know, I, I use that, and someone brought it to my attention, you know, and so I, I used it. And, you know, I, you know, one thing that my, uh, one of my, uh, tech guys his name's Robert he's my co-host in my show um you know he's real into just he asks so many questions sometimes you're like stop but he asked you it's just he you know he wants to learn more about these things and he so what he did was he purchased the app he turned it on and he would say keywords and then later on the app would say it too and he was like wait a second like this is this is not right you know and so you know whenever we have investigations where we won't use those specific apps or spe uh, specific devices and we notice that you don't get so many views because of it. But then the moment you do, the chats light up like fire. So I think it's, I think the, honestly, going forward, the purpose of it is only for entertainment. That's it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I tend to use, uh, I use one called the Portal Plus, um, but I don't use it on its own. I use it, I hook it up through what people could call a portal device, you know, which is an amp, an amp with, you know, the pedals attached to it. Um, just to be able to filter out any of the stuff in the background. Um, and you tend to find you get uh, anything that's more prominent then comes through. You don't get all the background stuff. Yeah, I hear you. And Drew, what's your opinion on the Ovulus? I'm not really kind of a big fan of it, personally. <laughs> personally, I'm not a massive fan of it. Um, I don't really look into it yet. 
um, reason why he haven't come to my attention um, when stuff like that. Because um, I prefer using some old sets, if you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. Something really old, set, old sets. I personally, I don't know. I, I think sometimes, again, it's- I just don't really think personally i i haven't got a word for it i haven't got a word for it and that's 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 how bad i am at the moment with stuff like that yeah. it's because my my usual tech guy really come on and explain things but i'm not a fan of stuff like this uh because <clears> sometimes <throat> um it can work in many different ways as all these guys coming up and stuff i'm not really a major fan of technology i'm not an ict tech person and fan with all this sort of stuff I rather stick to my old guns, and the amount of old stuff I use come out perfect than what the actual day to day is of 20th century. I should say the 20th century of the equipment. This I think is too much of uh, technology instead of actually kept me steady and easy. Um, anything could be so whatever. Well, I think that so is... I'm I'm just personally not a big fan of. I think in certain circumstances, when there's a, an anomaly, I guess you'd call it, it could be helpful. But as far as presenting that as evidence to our our clients, I just couldn't, in good conscience, do that. I think the biggest problem with it is, is it brings up a similar principle to, um, you know, looking at screenshots from, for, you know, and things like that, where you get your it's not just the uh, visual pareidolia that you get in that side of it. You get an audio pareidolia with any of these apps and also the obelisk as well, no matter what. Same with the spirit boxes, you know. They're of the same, you know, genre really, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to get an audio pareidolia come up with them no matter what. Now, I'm glad you brought up the spirit box because... Um, there's lots of times you hear what you want to hear when those things are going. Yeah. But I can say that I've had an investigation where this spirit box was cussing. And if you know anything about FCC regulations here in the United States, yeah, that is not allowed on the radio. Uh, same here. Unless it's after 9 p.m. at night, you know, then it's not allowed here. Yeah, we can't even do that after 9 o'clock around here, <laughs> especially the F-bomb. <laughs> yeah. So that's not a coincidence that, that that this word is being said. You're being being cussed out and things like that. But I guess if we capture that part, I might use it as evidence. But for the rest of it, I don't think I could use that as evidence either. So You know... Uh, t- Talking about, I'm sorry, I mean, interrupt no, anybody. No, 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 that's talking, what we're here for. Talking about the spirit box, um, you know, of course, I saw it starting off, you know, with with the, and it was actually, I think, before a little bit before Ghost Adventures, people were, you know, making the hatch, the Radio Shack versions of it. Um, but I remember when I, I bought mine from the, uh, uh, I think it's called GhostStop.com website. Mm-hmm. I went, I purchased it, and of course, because I saw Ghost Adventures at the time, I was like, I wonder how real it is, you know, because. Anytime I see these people in, in TV use certain devices, you know, I question like, you know, are are they programming it to say these certain words or, you know, have these certain responses at a certain time, you know, they can manipulate it that way. So I, I bought one, it came in and this was back in like 2014, 2015. My sister and my cousin, my sister's my co-founder of my team. At the time she was, she and my cousin got a house. My cousin's daughter, was being plagued by something in the house and my cousin she's one of those hardcore christian ladies you know she don't believe in the paranormal she don't believe in none of that i mean it could be right in front of her ghost could be there and she'll have an explanation for it you know and so her daughter has a very unique name okay my cousin went to california when she was a teenager uh, to become a you know this uh actress or whatever and she went to a play and she named her daughter's name after the play so anyways, fast forward to the investigation, or to when they moved into the house, I went into the home and I just got the spirit box in the mail. And I said, listen, I've never used a spirit box before. I'm gonna go to her room, respectfully, everybody stay as far away from the room as possible. I'm gonna lock both doors, there's two doors. Whatever you hear or whatever you, you know, don't come to the rooms, let me be there by myself. I go in there, I pray, and then I start my session and, you know, one of my questions was when I first started it was, 
um, I said, my my cousin's daughter is being affected by something here in this house. I said, before we go any further, I want to know if you know who I'm talking about. I said, if you do know who I'm talking about, the person in question, can you say their name for me, please? And not once did I say the name of my cousin's daughter. And this man, as soon as I asked the question, a man came through and said her name three times in a row. He said, Eurydice, Eurydice, Eurydice. And to me, it would have been different if I, if I would have heard, like, my name's Mike, like Mike or Joe or, you know, some name that may be common that came on the radio. But for, for me to hear Eurydice, unless it was a coincidence or it would just happen to be that, that name specifically was coming to the radio at that time. But for it to say her name three times in a row, that to me, I don't believe in coincidences. I felt like that was a real uh, experience that I had. But other than that, I think that was the most legit uh, time, or at least in, in, in my time of me investigating that, that box blew me away because I heard her name three times come through that, that device. It's really amazing. Well, I actually have a spirit box sitting here, actually. So, custom built one. Oh, nice. You um, can send that to me. I'll give you my address. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, all, it's it's an old radio that what we've done was we've got it. Um, so, there's just a casing of the old radio. And then uh, from there, what we've done is um, put a um, radio set into it. Not from an actual radio. It's a kit we, uh, we purchased we pulled in all the parts for and then hacked it to make for it so it um scans and uh it sounds really cool you know it's got reverb in it and everything so it sounds pretty cool but uh i haven't had a chance to test it yet because we're in lockdown all right so you can just send it to me i'll test it <laughs> <for> you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it has its its ups and downs um i don't know if y'all watch kindred spirits with uh amy bruni and Adam Barry, yeah. but one of their experiments is one of them will, you know, put on a blindfold in the headphones and and listen to the spirit box while the other one is asking questions. And so we decided to try that out ourselves. And when you were getting specific answers to specific answers, or you know, I mean specific answers to specific questions, excuse me, blah blah blah, mm. um, you know, is it coincidence? I don't know. But then once again, that's something that's really hard for me to <clears throat> pass on as evidence to the client. So what's your take on that, Drew? Sorry, I can't hear at the moment. Um, we have okay. a problem connection due to an helicopter passing through the military coming <laughs> through again because uh, I'm not far off from the airport and the military is based from us. I got you. So, spirit box, yay or nay? Uh, spirit box. Mm, I'm in between with spirit box because uh, we like um, I use one type of spirit box, um, and I found out pretty well how we use the connection of the radio going for the radio system. But when we got something, it'll come out clearly. Um, so I'm gonna say, yay. On that one, we we kind of like using spirit box sometimes, but we gotta make hundred percent sure what information it cuts coming out. So we'll look into it when we go through um, Oxford University to get history and just work on it. Uh, we kind of dig for the information. We don't uh, hold back on that. So spirit box, I say yay. Okay. That's out for the moment. And how about you, Michelle? Michelle, are you there? Hi. Oh, Can you hear me? Yeah, there you are. Yeah, it keeps lagging in and out for some reason. Um, I would have to say I'm okay with the spirit box. Uh, we've done the Gonsfeld experiment, uh, the headphones, the, you know, covering the eyes. And when you get those answers, you know, we actually put someone in a different room. So mm -hmm. this way people can't say it's coming through the headphones. Exactly. Um, we use a lot of white noise, uh, you know, old TVs, your old little 19 inch TVs. We like using a lot of that white noise to actually help try to fill this. So it's like a different type of spirit box. Um, me personally, you know, it's if I see it, the spirit there and something comes across, then I'm kind of legit with it. Okay. Audra and Nancy. We actually use a device called an Echo Box which is an app that you can purchase for your phone or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, we have a lot of really great results with that. I don't, pres I don't have a spirit box. Audra has one, but we've not really played with it a whole lot in investigations. We mainly use the echo box. Uh, she won't let you play with their toys. Sometimes. <laughs> if I'm a good girl, she'll let me. <laughs> It's okay. funny though, the echo box, we do get the F word that comes out a lot, but that's usually just us telling me that my spirit guide's with us for the night. <laughs> get yeah, that's long. one of me that I've really struggled ever with. I've never really got on with it. I've never worked out to set it up very well. Uh, I've got it, um, but it's just one app that I've never really sort of got on with personally. Well, I'm going to talk about two more devices and then we're going to move on from that. But one of them is the SLS camera. Now, let me tell you about the SLS. I got one. But I noticed that sometimes it'll pick things up just because of the object itself. I've only really had one real incident that I felt like it really worked. And the only reason why I say that is because we were at a house and the lady that lived there slept on the couch all the time and her mother always sat in a chair right next to her and as it, the evening went on here's this figure sitting in the chair now you could say it's picking up the chair but at one point you can see this figure leans over and acts like it's talking to the person at the couch and we're like okay if you're really there i want you to lift your arm and wave and it did exactly what i said wow. so i know a lot of people aren't crazy about it the ghost hunters aren't too crazy about it um i see nancy you're shaking your head so you you tell me we, we don't have one of those we right? don't. that's one of our dream or dream pieces of equipment Eventually we'll get one, but yeah, um, we've been looking for some results on that to, to weigh the price of it. Uh -huh. And uh, some people are with it, some people are against it. So we don't have any experiences though. I got you, Michelle? Um, if, when we use it in like an open area and mm -hmm. you don't have door jams and things like that and you get something that's pretty exciting, um, well, our tech guy actually can build them um and we have some for all the team members now doing it in a home investigation we don't because there is a lot of things that can manipulate it exactly. um so it depends on where we're at when we use it um me personally i'm not very fond of it because uh, you know a, a door jam will turn into a person and look like it's dancing so i do have some issues with that piece yeah, well, you know, all these spirits, they seem to dance around when you have the SLS on. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I had tap dancing, jazz, you know, they got huh. jazz hands and everything. So they really do. But if you're in an open building, you know, like if you were at Waverly and you got the long hallways and you go down those and you start getting something, then you can start looking at it as being, okay, this could be. Oh, Michelle. She froze. Yeah, Michelle froze on us. All right, Mike, I'm going to pass this one on to you. Well, I mean, honestly, man, I, I, I mean, I, it's funny because I have all the pieces uh, to, make, to make the device. The only thing I'm missing is a, dev uh, a, la a laptop or a, uh, uh, something that has Windows 7 on it. So I, just, I have all the pieces I haven't put together, but I've seen other people use it in investigations with me. And, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, it, it, there's times where, you know, something comes through. Like, okay, let me give you an example. Um, for those who don't know, and I believe Kyle may know, yeah, I think I told you about this one, the case where the client I had to take her from the third floor down to the first floor uh -huh. because something, something, you know, she became attacked. Well, this is something, something really interesting happened, uh, happened with uh, the SLS in her room where it all occurred. Um, she was, you know, she started, you know, hyperventilating, you know, she started, you know, just, I mean, she was, she lost it, man. She just flipped the, the you know, she was out of there. The moment she collapsed and she, you know, literally she passed out. When she came to, I mean, she was just all over the place. We, we, you know, we grabbed her, tried to move her from the room. And when we moved her, the SLS camera uh, was not in the room when, when we, when this was happening. They brought it into the room after she had gone, and she was out of the room for maybe about maybe like 30 minutes, maybe. They brought when they brought the SLS into the into the room that spot where she was at on the ground 
as soon as they turned the SLS on and it was they're doing the screen capture, it registered something right there in that same exact spot where she was at in almost the same exact position. I can't explain that. I don't you know, I don't know, you know, how to get in depth with that thing to say, hey, well this it could have been like a, a residual energy thing. Who knows? But it it, it, it it registered something there in the same exact spot and so you know, just me seeing that it was really interesting. But again, I don't know how that really thoroughly works, so I can't really say. Well, I would think if you can get it to do something, and it does exactly what you ask it to do, then yeah, there's got to be something there. But is it always accurate? No, I don't feel like it's always accurate. There's too many things that can cause it to actually move. Like Michelle was saying, you know, there's door jams and things like that. That it looks like something's dancing right there, and there's nothing there at all. Yeah. All right, Drew. Yay or nay on the SLS? Nay. Nay. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to Dan now. <laughs> Drew knows exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, the stick man, um, again, I've been watching a lot. I don't have the system. Okay, personally, reason why um, you can play about with it, I hear things about it um i've seen a lot where people is correct you know when they put it in the room suddenly they start dancing hell that'll be funny if they started dancing personally because they say look i'm here but actually they you know um personally my truth about the uh the stick man i call it a stick the reason why is it's a figure of stick and personally the system on it i think you can um i know this is really make everyone say, okay, maybe things are not, so I don't want to cause a situation on your broadcast. But my personal thinking, if you had the system, they could actually, um, you know, I think they could fake it. Do you get what I mean? So basically, could the system actually be there and put, you can play with the settings and then go through it uh, properly? I think you can fake it on uh, the stick man. And personally, again, yeah, I could see about the door situation and all that. But it does something about the stick man. I, I wanted one then. Um, Dan actually had to show me to look into it a bit more, so I did. And the real interest in it is I don't really kind of now want one because it is possible it, it could just pick up, um, again, electrical, mag electrical, I can't say it today, electrical ma uh, magnetic fields um, where it might just be... Um, particle dust in forms or something it could possibly does pick up something like that and I'm not really a big fan on it personally now because I've, I've realized um, the difference between it and uh, it's been ages since I started doing that and I really wanted one but my one of my team members think is a if a jiffy they wanted one just to get the experiment I said well I'm sorry no personally I think you know it's a little bull crap for my stage and that's the way it is Okay. Dan. Oh, uh, you're itching to say something. I could probably go all night on the what people call an SLS <laughs> camera because, um, you know, everybody calls it a structured light sensor, but it's not. Um, unless you buy the specific one that was specifically built as, and it was con co it was called an SLS camera, which the structured light sensor is, it also does heat, and so it does temperature, mm -hmm. it does... Yeah. Um, all different sense, you know, has loads of different sensors built into it, so you get a full graph uh, of, of um, heat and light and etc. Et going on. Um, anybody who uses a Connect generally uses it in a completely wrong sense because they've made them portable, and that's the problem. A Connect camera was made to sit on the top of your TV or just below your TV, and is designed to pick up, and it's actually made and it's designed it's, it's programmed to pick up on specifically uh things like your limbs your body because mm -hmm. uh, of movement and then on top of that um it picks up on furniture and things so it's programmed into the system uh the average shape of a chair or a table or things like that and a door as you were saying um so it will pick up on it if it and it will only work up to about six feet away because that's the that's what it's meant to like the average small front room of a house or bedroom is what it's meant for um i don't use the connect software myself i use a different software mm -hmm. and i use a different camera as well as so i use a different motion tracking camera 
Um, the one I use is for is made for robotics. Um, so, the, and the the, the um, program that I use is nothing to do with the Connect or anything like that. It's um, completely separate software that's designed to uh, specifically pick up on some on anything in terms of, and turn it into a stick figure if it's if there is motion there. So I mean I've had I've had um, really good evidence from it where I've been I, I make sure mine's static as well it goes on a tripod um, the, the sensor does it sits on a tripod and doesn't move um, so where I've had it where in, there's a, a there's a venue uh, in a place called Mansfield here called the Village and they've got pillars in the in the main section of it and those pillars have got little sort of pedestals uh, at the bottom mm -hmm. and uh, I've had it where uh, we actually had um, what looked like this, uh, a stick figure the size of a small child sitting on the actual pedestal and when i went over to it and moved my arm this stick figure turned and faced me and uh so that was a really good bit of evidence we got because just before that we caught a shadow figure on camera in the same area so wow. it, it's you know those things we we corroborated those bits and pieces with the actual evidence and the the stories from the past that have been in that venue, you see. Um, there was a small child that was, that was actually raped and killed on the site oh, uh, originally yeah. before all the buildings were there. There was no buildings there before, you see. It, um, so SLS cameras, everybody calls them an SLS camera. They're not an SLS camera. They are, that's why I always call mine a stick man setup because that's what it is, really. Um, I was, and I say to everybody, if you're gonna buy one, make sure it's static, don't have a handheld one because it's not designed for that. You're always going to get false in information out of it if it's handheld. That's the thing. Okay. All right. One last piece of equipment I want to talk about, and then I have a uh, another uh, procedure that uh, I would really like to get this in before we have to, to end, because believe it or not, we're getting pretty close to the end. So <laughs> let's try to make these answers as quick as possible. I'm going to start with Michelle and the REM pod. REM pod, I would say I kind of like it if it's, you know, um, not in the center of, you know, where everybody's at. If you put it in a room by itself um, that's not been contaminated, I think it does pretty well. Okay. Mike? Well, um, I finally used one uh, with, the, with the fe another fellow investigator outside of NPS. He brought one to a case of ours, and something about it was – just a little off for me. I mean, everywhere we put it, it just kept going off and going off and going off. And, you know, we, you know, we try to make sure there was nothing that would cause it to go off, like any kind of uh, power lines or anything that would, you know, naturally make it spike or, you know, react. And no matter what we did, it just kept going off and off, you know, all throughout the whole house and took it outside and we turned it off, took the batteries out, changed the batteries and everything we did for it. Um, it just kept, you know, just, going off randomly like it wasn't like a we asked a question or you know a, you know can you make this thing go off it was just on its own just boom 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 and so to me it was just I, I didn't really like it and I just stopped using it okay I asked for the gentleman to put it away all right back to you Dan uh well I'll try and keep it short and sweet uh up until October last year I owned the UK rights to the REM pod so really? uh up until October last year yeah because um Mr. Goldcrew himself only own, only owns any rights in the states, you see. So, um, a couple of years back, we worked, we found out what was inside of the REM pod, which is a junior theremin, and um, we started building our own. And we try, we we basically um, took out the rights on the design of it. So, and up until it, it, they, those rights ran out in October last year. So, uh, my personal thoughts on it, though, I've only ever had it. Got my my, I've got one of the original REM pods, and my one's only ever gone off once. Um, we worked that out. It was, it was old wiring in a building. We flicked the light switch off, and uh, sorry, we flicked the light switch on, and the REM pod went upstairs, went off. Uh, all of us went up there, ran, ran up there, tried to bit of communication. Nothing more come of it at all. Went back downstairs, tested it with the light switch, flicked the light switch off. Switch off inflicted back on REM pod went off again so exactly what uh, Mike was saying with regards to you know uh, electromagnetic field fluctuations can um, outside sources can mess with it but it's a good bit of equipment but um, it's 
I've never had any results from it. Okay. And you said it's got like parts from a theremin in it? It's a, it's a junior theremin, yeah. Okay. It's, so it's, it's basically a mini version of what of a, of a theremin instrument. So did you try to play Star Trek on it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Drew. Give me your opinion. Is that nope? <laughs> he says, no comment. He says, what he's, Dan said. He's, too much of a, he's more of a spiritual. Yeah, um, I, I played with Ren Pod before, and um, again, I'm going to agree with on this situation with Dan. Um, but we did have a good outcome because we went to a location where it was no um, any lo location or, um, or Wi-Fi or any internet, no live stream, no electricians, um, not much of an EMF area. Start, and this is the only bit we kind of try to work out how the hell did it get it to bleep and that. And uh, we we tried everything, we tried to work it all out, and we still couldn't work it out. Even we went to Biff Biff Red and called um, a friend of us who works in the area's electrician around the locations of the area, and he said, No, there's no um, official wires going through, but it could, is some going through to the local houses, they won't send much out. so we were stunned how it just went off on our demand. So I'm going to say, personally to me, I like REM pods and uh, I, I'll give them a little bit of support, but in between with Dan as well. So I'm going to go in between the slice of the cake, I would uh -huh. say. <laughs> <laughs> there's, different type of, there's different type of things that are all about REM pods personally and uh, everyone's got their own opinion. Um, and I. You know, everyone's got their own stuff to deal with it and their own investigation. But again, um, the more study can be done with them, the more um, it can get either this case out of like REM pods are not good, or either the REM pods are good. The more cases you got out there, they say, hey, actually, this REM pod is crap. And then I, I personally would say, well, okay, yeah, I understand it. But it's, it's an answer that yes or no, basically. Mm -hmm. And no one can answer that one really. Not even the best person in the world can answer it. And sadly, that's where we step between technology these days now, all 2020 again. Uh, and oh. we can't answer the full word of it. It can't. So, okay. I'm and... in between of it at the moment. I, I if I can sit down on it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Audrey, Audrey, and Nancy. Yeah. Nancy's got a REM pod and the thing is so sensitive especially when the batteries are low that's when we always seem to have the lights going off and so we the other is the temperature gauge and that seems to go off even if there's not even a one degree shift the temperature gauge will go off to a point of where we were at an investigation and we thought that it might actually be giving us Morse code from it I joined a uh, ham radio team on Facebook and I sent them the clip but the problem was is that I was talking over the stupid thing the entire time hey that sounds like Morse code do you think that might be Morse code we couldn't get anything from it because I wouldn't shut up <laughs> so, <laughs> you know it's the uh, chip on the board for the Ferrum Junior Ferrum you see has a, a program part of the code on the chip uh, is designed so that it will um, go off continuously if the batteries are low Right. So really? it's, it's it's a program in it, yeah. It's just like telling you that it needs a battery change. Right now, I'll say this, and mind you, I put two sets of batteries on that thing, uh, the little nine volt batteries. I just to make sure. But you talked about the whole Morse code thing. Mm -hmm. It started doing that, and then it just got quiet. And I found an app on my phone where you could actually put in a sentence and then it would do the versions of the beeps and all that stuff oh. in Morse code and then they weren't sitting next to each other mind you so it wasn't the vibrations or anything these it was talking back and forth oh wow and yeah it sounded like Morse code and found out that the place we were at actually used to be a post office back in the 1800s oh wow so Holy Morse cow. code maybe yeah. Okay, one more subject, and then we're going to have to call it quits. And this one is kind of, uh, it, it means a lot to me because I have a very strong opinion about it. Provoking. And since we started with y'all, when we started this thing, I'm going to start again with you, Audrey and Nancy. 
Absolutely not. No. Thank never. you. Never. 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 You Thank respect you. them. You have to respect those spirits. They're there for a reason. They live their lives. They've done their thing. You've got to respect that. Exactly. Michelle. Oh, I think she's froze again. Are you froze again, Michelle? She's just tired of our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, well, we'll go with you. Um, I have to agree. I, I don't do, uh, I don't provoke in any way because, you know, not to make a long answer, but the way I see it is I'm being called for, for a service. I'm, I'm being called because these people need assistance. And who am I to go in there and, and add to the already existing activity? You know, it's, it's ridiculous. And I know people say, oh, there's different ways, there's different uh, things you could do with provocation. But to me, ultimately, it's, it's you know, this is not a, a physical thing that you can stop if something happens. It's a spiritual thing. And there's no way if, let's say, someone gets attacked, I can't physically walk up to whatever's there and, and touch in the chest and push it away. So, you know, you got to be very mindful, even if whatever's there is being disrespectful to you or, you know, being ugly, just you keep your cool and, you know, just be respectful because you just never know what can happen. Exactly. All right, Michelle, are you there now? I'm here. Can you guys hear me? I hear you. Yes. <laughs> um, actually, no provoking. Um, and uh, if any team member is caught doing it, they're pretty much uh, hand your bag in and have a nice day. Good for you. Good for you, Drew. Drew. I can hear the big belts. There you are. I can hear the big belts. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely no focus. Um, I kind of use different tech tech ways to uh, work with the spirits anyway. Um, no matter what the situation is. Again, I agree with everyone. No provoke All right, because. Dave. I, I think you. I would say it depends on your uh, definition of provocation, really. I think I if, you to, if you have to ask the, the question more than once, potentially you are provoking in some ways. Okay. Uh, so I think if you're respectful, and yes, you might, you know, you might ask uh, a, the same question two or three times to try and get a definitive answer. You could be, as I say, you could be deemed as some form of provocation. So, if you're doing it in a respectful manner, then as long as you're not going in swearing or cussing or trying to um, push them by calling them every thing under the sun, under the you know under the sun, I think as long as if, if there is if it's just questions and you're being and the respectful questions, even if you have to ask them two or three times, then that's respectful provocation to a degree. But it's the same with anybody. You don't want to be asked the same question over and over again. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I've, that, I've had three kids. I know exactly what that yeah. means. <laughs> <laughs> and now the yeah. grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you yeah, know, back was a simple answer to that one. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, the provocations. You know, basically what we'd see on certain television shows where they come and go. Hey, you know, you're so big and bad then um, come mess with me. You know, I think that you're worthless. That's, that's kind of along the lines of what we we're talking about. That's all show for TV. And then they run away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dude, dude run is the is the phrase most people know over there, isn't it? Dude run. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right. Bro. Good, good old Mr. Harmer. <laughs> well, One of my shot is um, me and Taylor, when we experiment, because we, we work with the spirits very, very closely, uh, like everyone else. Um, me and Tila have an experiment. We have the experiment um, because um, on the UK um, on the radio shows, um, Tila's been named like the um, basically they give their name a nickname as what they call it the uh, Queen Scram, uh, Scream or the Queen of Scrams, because we try to show people if you do stuff in a negative way, it's the wrong way to do it. So this is what can possibly happen. So we try to show. <sighs> To me, in personal minded, never go in with provoking, never do it. Okay, um, this is where I work. I work completely different to every others. I don't try and provoke. I show people what happens if you provoke. It kind of goes to the wrong way of Barrett and how to deal with it. And um, to show me and my wife kind of work very, very closely um, and try and show the point, it is something there. 
you know, if you go in the booth and this is why they're scramming people, even if you just sit down and ask them to scram you, um, you're basically provoking them, um, no matter what the situation is, even if you ask them to throw a stone, again, that's provoking, anything's provoking, uh, but even if you have that manner, you've got to think about it logically, and you have to be very psychologically mindful on it as well. Um, and personally, this is where I work with a lot of people and give that to certain places to people. Just have an open mind a little bit and just think about the way the questions are answered usually because we've made a lot of improvement, me and Tila have, um, is to certain questions when you're asking, can you scrum me? Can you chuck a stone? Can you, you know, and that's actually classes provoking as well at the same time. And that's why I've gone into experiments. So that's why she was named the, uh, the, the Queen Scram on a radio show uh, because she was getting scrammed all the time. You know, I, I think I have to ask the question. Do you guys, do you guys know what the mean, what the word scram means? No, no. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm going. To, I'm just, I'm just nodding my head yes and yeah. come on, Dan. Conversation. See, he is clairvoyant. He is clairvoyant. He could tell. We all were like, let's just say, we say, like we'll turn around and say silly things like scram, but that means basically scratched. That sort of thing. Okay. But we'll oh, okay. that, that, that's what I was kind of, I was kind of thinking because he said scram. Yeah, and I, I was thinking is maybe scratch. So okay. there's a difference between scram and scram. Okay. Oh. Well, scram, I, I thought, scram is thing. I, I thought with Drew it meant that you were cramming spam into your mouth. <laughs> 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 I always do this on any show. I always give the different words out from any show. Do you listen to it on the radio show? I even said. I'm not going to say it. Wait, no, I'll bugger it. Shall I say it? I actually said um, bondage there, bonding. I, I actually uh -oh. said you know, thousands of thousands of people watching, 50,000 to nearly quarter of a million people. Yeah. Uh, it's, we, we, we have some strange words over in the UK, that, so. Yeah, you're definitely. Good, you're good. Where I'm from, we say babber. Babber. It's basic, basically that. We say, all right, my babber, like that. And it just means, <laughs> it, it's, in other words, all right, love, that sort of thing, you know? Gotcha. How you doing? You know, that's, it's basically what we say. So daft things like that, you know? Well, as long as you can understand us, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> that's <not like> <laughs> I crack up Drew all the time when I talk to him. I'm like, hey, y'all. <laughs> and he says, y'all. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> yes, Drew's, Drew's from deep South Wales, you see. Well, South Wales in, in the, obviously in the UK, and it's uh, you know when when you listen to some of the way that they speak, I mean, you know, you can you can't understand a word they're saying half the time. I like, actually, subtitles, please. Yeah, uh, I know, sub, subtitles wouldn't you wouldn't be able to understand them. <laughs> you, you get the UK Southern draw. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but to me, uh, like for you, for, sorry to you, I might sound a bit farmerish. You know what I mean? Um, and but like I actually live in South Wales now, and Drew actually lives nearer to where I'm from, so we've kind of switched places. So I pick him up a bit more of a Welsh lingo, and he's picking up a bit more of a, a, a farmerish lingo, you know. So uh, well, it's, it's soon as soon as Drew gets here and for the visit, and we we're gonna teach him all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so you're really gonna say he's got an accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't tell Dan about this yet. Um, basically, I'm, I am me and Taylor's actually taking the baby uh, for a couple of holidays awesome. down in Texas to, to enjoy with Kyle. So, um, awesome, literally, me and Kyle's got like a lot of date booking out type of thing, and his wife. So, oh, yeah. me and Kyle's some, having a date. Like we, said. we got some barbecuing and, and some gun shooting to do. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, you know, we didn't agree on everything 100%, but I, I say the provoking, we all agree on that. That's that's bad. Shouldn't do that. I know I, there's still people out there that do it, but I, everybody agrees it's disrespectful. Um, here you've got a tortured soul already. Why torture him any further? But do you know what, Carl? I think I'll say to you this much, though, with that. I was saying it on my show earlier on. Uh, basically, I mean, we all have a different belief system when it comes to the paranormal, whether that's spiritual, whether that's uh, whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? And uh, but the the one thing everybody's got to understand is every single thing to do with the paranormal really is theory based. There's nothing concrete that prov proves that there is 
life after death at the moment. And so every single thing we use, whether that's, you know, a technical piece of equipment or whether it's a spiritual belief, it's all theory based really, isn't it? So it's, it's a belief system, I think. Well, apparently you haven't woke up on a Monday morning with a hangover if you don't believe in life after death. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> trust me, I don't drink. <laughs> I don't drink. When the last time I did, it was in the middle of it was the middle of the forest. I, I woke up and. <laughs> well, everyone that joined us, uh, I sure appreciate you being here. You took time out of your day, and that means a lot. Um, I took time out of Drew and uh, and Dan's night because it's after it's, uh, midnight ten over past, there. Ten past one here. Ten past one. See, wow. they stayed up late for us. Oh, we're in lockdown, so three o'clock in the morning is like bedtime. <laughs> uh, I got you. I got you. Um, I think this turned out pretty good, and um, I'm willing to do this again if y'all are. Be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Okay. I would love to talk about some more in depth. At, uh, like the, like the meat of things, you know, I would love to do yeah. that. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, and if anybody wants cool. to come on my show as well, I'm doing nightly shows now at UK, 8 p.m. UK time. So it'll probably be about three, about three in the afternoon for you guys, I'd imagine. Um, you can do that. You know, uh, you're more welcome to come over on my page and join me if you want. I've got um, Daryl uh, from Ghost Hunters on with me Saturday. So uh, You got Daryl? Yeah, Daryl Marston's with me on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love Daryl. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, I've got I'm hoping I've got Brian Cano on Thursday. Um, so I'm waiting for I'm just waiting for confirmation because he might he said he might be going back to work and then I, I'm still yet to hear back. I've I've had good chats with um, uh, oh, my brain's just gone to mush now. It's too late, I think, for me. Um, Showing your age. <laughs> I've had some good chats with some, a few other different people, but I'm just waiting to sit to, for, um, you know, for replies at the moment. But yeah, Daryl's are confirmed for Saturday night. Yeah, I had Daryl. Uh, I had Daryl yesterday in the evening. I was, saw. Yeah, I did see. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, when Drew sent me a, um, a link to your page. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking. I'm definitely looking forward to that. I pretty much have all of them pretty locked down, and I re and I just got conf uh, confirmation from. Uh, 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 Kristen from herself. She uh, all awesome. I need now, all I need now is Grant, man. And once I get Grant, I'm, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, good I'm luck not... with Grant, though. Oh, man. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something, man. There's no such thing as impossible. So it, that's as long true. As you that's true. Speaking to existence, it'll happen, man. I'll tell you what. The best the the, the best guy I've ever spoken to in the past is Rob Demarest. I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, oh yeah, Rob. Uh, Rob's an amazing guy, and he's he's hilarious, and he just says it as it is, and. The moment I know that the last time I spoke to him, I said to him, I said, what do you reckon of this app? And he, and I'll tell you, I can't even repeat what he said, but it was um, pretty much in the case. Let's just say it was um, a few swear words short of, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. We have, we have a disclaimer at the beginning of the show. So if anybody cusses. <laughs> but yeah. So, um, yeah, we got a few things. So I was actually, when I uh, set up my group initially, my first group, um, I was actually uh, went on the list as a, a family member of the Ghost Adventures team as well when, that, when all that was happening. So I was one of the f uh, only four teams in the UK to actually be on their list. Oh. Um, and usually it, it was a case of you had to have at least three years experience uh, and I've done so many investigations and um, that we, we got accepted after 12 months of being around so we we did 54 investigations in the first year um and uh, that's pretty much what got us the uh link on to them so uh mm -hmm. couldn't couldn't go too wrong <laughs> well we'll keep in touch because i would love to come on your show yeah that'd be great be great to have you on and yeah, i'm gonna nice. i'm gonna have a little talk with Kristen because she still hasn't answered me back yeah, I'm and Michelle as well, yourself as well. I'd love to have you on because it'd be good to talk about Ed and Lorraine. Um, Sweet, I think Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. I, I would love to talk to you about that. I think she froze again. Oh, there she is. Oh, she is. she, she froze with an. At, at I least say though, she hey, froze with a smile on her face. Hey, you know what's funny? <laughs> you ask a question and she lags, and then when you're not asked the question, she comes back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Better late than never, right? No, uh, no, you're good. Um, no, actually, it'll be great because I do work uh, right next to uh, Chris, who is in Lorraine's uh, grandson, and yeah. 
we're con we're continuing the foundation work. So I'd, I'd love to come and talk about it. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I did I, message I, Tony I, I, and ask him if he wouldn't mind coming on, but um, so I haven't had a response yet. But and it's two sides because like Tony and Judy take care of like the because they hooked up with the Warner Brothers and Hollywood where Chris has went off to continue the work that his grandparents yeah. did. Yeah, so I speak to Chris now and nice. again, yeah. Yeah, he's good, good peeps. Yeah, he's a lovely guy. So, yes. But no, um, Michelle, real quick, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I want to talk to you because I have a current client who she has some very interesting uh, vintage dolls that we've been working with for like maybe four years already. And I want to show you some of the evidence that we've collected from the dolls. And it, it just... The it's 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 the, it, it I'm getting tongue tied, but it's just scary to see the grip that these things have on her. It's 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 crazy. Um, we we do that because um, I I deal with a lot of like haunted objects, mm -hmm. and so people send them to me, and I actually store them up just like the museum, like the Lorraine uh, the Warrens. Um, and I have a box that came to me from Colorado, thirty four dolls. Good that grief. had an attachment to a person so yeah, yeah. and other you know, um, when i release them she'd rather die than to to have them go anywhere else she, it, it's yeah. it's so bad yes. like the worst thing is, well not the worst thing but she would drive in her car with them seat belted and just go cruising with them and and you yeah. get close to them and she will get like i mean like a cat gets all crazy like she does not want you close to them or touching them and and i've i've been affected by them but i'll talk to another story for another day Yes. I've actually yes. got the, the doll that was the mo the deemed the most the most haunted UK doll uh, origin the original most haunted UK doll. Not um, that's that's coming to me in the next couple of weeks. Nice. So I'm, I'm gonna have a, a few weeks of investigating that in my house with that. So uh, nice. <laughs> you know, uh, me and Drew and Audra and Nancy were starting to feel a little left out over here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is my show, thank you. <laughs> but no, um, I, I really want to thank all of you for being on, and um, I, I want to have all of you individually on the show. I had Mike and Drew on the show, so Michelle and 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 Dan, and, and of course Audra and Nancy. So if uh, if we can keep in contact, and I'd like to have you individually on the show, and we will try to set up this again. Maybe okay, another so. week or two. Sounds great. Sounds, good. sounds, sounds wonderful. Good. Yeah. So y'all get ready to like you know cuss and throw stuff and <laughs> you know bitch each My other kind of out. show. Let's <laughs> make it as dramatic as possible. Maybe we can we can get on uh, Jersey Shore or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody that's joined us, whether on YouTube or on one of the other platforms, thank you for joining us and. Um, I look forward to doing this again, and I hope y'all are too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice Thank evening. You. Thank y'all. You all as Bye. well. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at the Vibes Broadcast.